Hey, it's Mike here, and today we have a reasonably large study on kitties and doggos and whether or not they should be fed a vegan diet, or really just the impact of that diet from various studies. You know, we all love our cats and dogs. I've done videos on this before. You know, I have had dogs currently have Diego, who's super cute and he does eat V-Dog, which I believe is a well-formulated vegan diet by a company who, if they were messing things up, would get some major flack, so they are really making sure everything is in there. And I have definitely seen a lot of negative comments about vegans feeding animals a vegan diet, you know, pushing their ideology on the animals, because it really is the case, especially with carnivore cats, that they are not naturally eating a vegan diet. So the question becomes, if it's not coming from animals, are they getting what they need? That's what it is at the end of the day. They don't live off souls. Some cats kind of act like they do live off souls, um, but it's it's nutrients and macronutrients, etc., that keeps their body running. So we'll see what this study shows. <laughs> but this is a review right here that looked at quite a few studies. And so even though it's not 100% definitive, we're getting some pretty solid answers, especially on some of these other nutrients like taurine and carnitine. And whether or not these dogs are coming up short on them, the answer is very interesting. And I did just want to look through the study with you guys, do something a little bit different this time, and just show you sort of the whole body of the study, which might be more useful in sort of learning how to parse out studies yourself. So let's just get into it. The journal is MDPI, really the sub journal of that is Veterinary Sciences. And it is a systematic review. So it's not a meta-analysis. So it's not gonna be looking at statistical you know, results as much, but it is going to be looking at a lot of different studies on cats and dogs here. There's more so in dogs, but we still have some good findings in cats that they show. And it is from some people out of Mexico and Australia. And so it's an interesting mix here. First interesting thing, I think is just to see how they included the studies that they did and how many they included. They looked at quite a few, you know, they were up around 100 here with their screening, and then they came down to 18 and then 16 final studies included in the review, which is quite a bit. And another really interesting thing is actually how much this topic has been researched over time. Really very few studies in the 90s and the 2000s. But then I don't know if it was everybody was cooked up with all their animals in, in uh, the pandemic. And so they did a bunch of studies now, <laughs> but in 2021 and 2022, we got a lot here. And so we have the different bars is feline versus canine. And we really have a lot that came out in 2022, especially in dogs eight. So, you know, the majority are in dogs, but there's still some good ones in cats. And it is an over 20 page study. I figured I'd start on page 22 here. They only have a graphic of a cat. They don't have one of a dog, but some of these cross over in terms of the nutrients of concern, especially we have taurine, which is one that a lot of these, really all of these commercial dog foods that are vegan and cat foods need to have to be safe, especially in the cat. You can see that if these animals are not getting that, they're gonna be having some retinal degradation. And so dogs can make some taurine to an extent, uh, but uh, cats really need to have it. And so they really both should have it to have healthy animals. So we have various nutrients here like vitamin D and, and vitamin A, and then these other uh, amino acids, which is where it gets interesting. It's saying like potential plant-based diet deficiency. These are the ones that are listed but that makes me wanna to go to the actual results that they found, because I was a little bit uh, taken off guard with, with regards to the protein findings. Let me just scroll through 20 pages of stuff. And here at table two, we have the various studies and what they looked at, the type of study that they were, which is interesting. You know, we have various non-randomized experimental trials. We even have uh, a couple experimental randomized trials here, which I think are good. Some of these are just vegetarian, but a lot of them are 100% vegan or plant-based. You can see what they looked at. Some of them were interested in different things. You know, this one did blood hematology. You know, they looked at pancreatic parameters, you know, carnitine, B12. And then uh, this one, for example, just looked at gastric emptying right over here. So they were looking at just how the stomach emptied on this vegetarian formula. And thankfully, Table three, they actually put a chart of various studies 
together and just showed what are the effects that these studies found. Simple little icons here. And we can see that um, body weight remained the same. A lot of things, actually look at this, essential amino acids from this study actually went up, which is pretty funny. And it's because these are planned diets. And so a lot of these cheap commercial dog foods are just throwing a bunch of, you know, animal factory waste in there. You know, in addition to probably some starchy fillers, which dogs are adapted to eat more than wolves, which is interesting, shows that they've been living with us eating starch for a while. And so we have a couple things that were a little bit lower, like choline and betaine. Uh, but again, we're seeing some things go up like taurine actually going up in this one on the uh, diet that didn't even have meat in it, which is really interesting to think about. And then a lot of other things were equal. Just for this one, they found you know body weight, poop score, digestibility, uh, and it was all equal from these studies. And going on and on from the hematology, a lot of these are within reference range. And this one looked at general appearance. They found that uh, the dogs were alert, responsive, and playful. Um, there were some cases where <clears throat> not every single dog was in the reference range. I would be curious to see how this would compare to a control. This particular study, apparently the dogs you know, weren't within the reference range as much with carnitine. But this study actually found that the carnitine was higher. So we're finding a bit of a mixed signal here, depends on you know what the diets that these dogs are being fed, but it shows that a pretty well-planned diet, you can be higher in carnitine than a meat-based diet. And apparently on average, we're seeing some higher taurine levels as well in these dogs. Now here's a study that I actually did skim over, I saw come out. And uh, it's interesting because they were saying a oh, veterinary visits are lower, medic medication use is lower, all this stuff. You know, perception of health is higher, health disorders are lower. However, it was completely self-reported. So it could be accurate and it could be the case that these dogs are actually healthier than the ones that are fed, you know, meat in their diet as well. Or it could be just a situation that the dog owners are really proud and they just believe that they're doing better. And you know, you have seen sometimes there's like that dog owner with that old decrepit dog that is basically like a zombie Muppet that probably, you know, is at the end of its life and they're all like, oh no, a little Skippy's perfect. Um, so there might be a little bit of that projection, but in general, uh, it's looking good. And then I do also like in terms of dogs to wrap up dogs here, we have this breakdown of you know, four randomized control trials here. They're saying a moderate degree of evidence, which is actually quite high given the stand standards that we have here. You know, that's like three out of four stars essentially that their body weight and body condition was good. Body weight or condition was generally equivalent to control animals and meat-based diets and within the healthy range, which is solid. And then these other ones, slightly lower quality of evidence, but still the evidence is you know reasonable for, for observational studies. This one, two randomized control trials uh, for the taurine. And they're saying contrary to expectations, plasma and whole blood taurine were increased in dogs fed plant-based diet. So very interesting finding. Uh, then B12 here from two studies at least were found to be within the reference range for dogs. And they had been fed vegan diets over a moderate to long period. I mean, it's the same situation as, you know, people being <laughs> supplemented B12. They're supplemented B12. Uh, it's very likely that they're gonna be doing just fine. And then uh, folate was fine. And iron as well was mostly fine, they're saying long-term, mostly within the reference range. So good findings with the dogs. I'm happy about that. I've talked about in the past how we had a little miniature wiener dog who had a life expectancy of 12 and we actually started feeding him V-Dog or other vegan foods transferring into V-Dog whenever that came out. And he lived to be 17, so he lived five years past life expectancy, which is pretty solid, eating a fully vegan diet and some things like bad breath got a little bit better. And now though, let's go to cats, which I have always felt conflicted about because they are just so obviously pretty much pure carnivores and so, any nutrient failure could be a little bit more exaggerated in them. And I have heard, you know, good stories about cats fed on a vegan diet, but there could be bad cases out there I haven't heard about, I'm not sure. I wanna be sort of neutral on that topic, but we can just look at this chart right here, which is, you know, what is the impact on cat health with the various studies here. These are all observational. Unfortunately, we don't have randomized control trials, but it's still giving us an idea. But we're saying, you know, two out of four stars or one out of four stars for the quality of evidence. And those findings are slightly mixed. Basically two studies found that taurine levels were fine and one study found that they weren't. So clearly it's possible 
to get fine taurine levels, but if somebody is feeding their cat a food that is not legit and has enough taurine, then there could be an issue. And also I feel like you need to make sure there's actually enough in there. Vitamin B12, cobalamin was generally found to be within reference range, so that's solid. And folate, this is an interesting one that I had not really considered, being somebody who doesn't own cats, that uh, is something that we get on a vegan diet and just generally higher. We have lower deficiency rates as humans in folate. I believe Michaela Peterson on her carnivore diet just got a folate deficiency and was like, I need to eat organ meat, which is, uh, yes, actually where cats are generally getting folate from. Yeah, well, this isn't a highly scientific page on it. It just highlights some of the basics. That, yeah, folate in the diet of cats comes from an array, including those liver meats. You know, in these commercial cat foods, probably also yeast, wheat, and some green veggies, and then grass. Cats are known to chew on grass. I'm not sure if that makes a nutritional difference or not, but uh, yeah, it's something that is really high in plant foods. Uh, compared to meat itself. But then for a carnivorous animal, they're gonna be getting it from organ meat. So they just have to make sure that that is actually being taken care of. And so going back to the study, it was the case that folate was significantly decreased in cats because some of these cat food companies or cat food supplements might not be putting it in there yet. They obviously need to do that. So I would say if you have a cat, make sure you got that in there. But this source does even say that it's not unusual for feline to experience a deficiency in folic acid, and this is not a article about vegan diets. So it appears that this is an issue across various cat diets. And again, there's like 25 pages of this study, so there's a lot of good points that we won't be able to cover, but looking to the discussion, uh, it is interesting to see that that 2022 study just reported widely positive health benefits going all the way to less eating poop, which is definitely something that I had to prevent our previous wiener dog Milo from doing. He loved to eat poop his whole life. It was just a, a lifelong habit. Um, <laughs> but they do say it's a field that is you know, getting more attention and especially because these food companies are seeing the market for it. And so when we're looking at a dog food here, I just went to V-Dogs website. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, uh, but they actually have something that says, what, my vet doesn't support a vegan diet for my dog. What do I do? And they actually have a handy sheet here that you can give your vet. And it also shows what ingredients are in there. And so this is really interesting because we can see, yes, they actually did throw taurine in there. This is what you want to make sure when you're looking at the back, they do have vitamin B12. No, they do have that carnitine and vitamin D. So they've got the sort of four especially that you wanna have in there. They've gone even further and they've added things like extra methionine in there. And so this is, this is solid. Now here's another option which I've heard of in the past, which is probably a cheaper alternative to V-Dog, which I know can rack up, especially if you have a larger dog. Thankfully, Diego is like 10 pounds. Um, but this is one you're making your own food, you add to it, it's called Veggie Dog. It's a powder and it does also have, you know, vitamin, B12 and taurine, and it doesn't have carnitine. It is the case that dogs make their own carnitine. I still think it's better to have it in there. I think that, you know, it couldn't hurt to add it here. And it's cool to see more of these products pop up. It looks like this is a European one called V-Complete. And this one does have a bunch of things in it. It's got your B12, your carnitine, and your taurine, as well as some other, you know, methionine and tryptophan. And uh, you can actually look in detail at what it has. It also has folic acid. And then the conclusion, this review has found that there is no convincing evidence of major impacts of vegan diets on dog or cat health. And then again, saying though that there is a limited number of studies and you know maybe they could be longer and that there's even some benefits for animals arising from the result of feeding them vegan diets. And maybe some of that's because it's a little bit less from the commercial food waste stream. I mean, we have various, you know, slaughterhouse byproducts and stuff like that that are going into these animal feeds, which I think is way better than killing more animals to be feeding these other animals, but it, it can show that maybe there's some stuff getting in there that is not the healthiest for these animals. And just to elaborate on that, again, not the most scientific source, but at least according to someone who wrote a book on this, uh, the leading diseases in dogs today, like 
cancer, heart disease, and kidney disease are almost unheard of before the rise of commercial pet food. We don't need to get into it, but there is a lot of information about, you know, just the risks that dogs undergo eating your standard pet food from the store. So just wanted to share this as a response to all the people coming for vegans. Now we've talked about microplastics and chicken nuggets, etc. So there's probably a little bit of that stuff going on. And they do add that the beneficial findings were relatively consistent across several studies and therefore should not be disregarded. And that there's really urgent need for more studies on this. But finally, this brings me to that point that I was trying to make for guardians wishing to feed their pets vegan diets at the current time. Based on available evidence, it is recommended that commercially produced vegan diets are used since these are less likely to lead to nutrient imbalances. I know a lot of people are cooking for their animals, but you wanna make sure you have at least one of those well-formulated additives that you put in, which is probably similar to what they're putting into something like V-Dog, where it's got the carnitine, it's got the taurine, et cetera, et cetera, checking all those boxes, B12. So while I've been in support of especially feeding dogs a vegan diet, you know, I was never pushing it really that hard and being like, oh, dogs should be fed a vegan diet and all that stuff. But now I feel like with all of this evidence in one place, there's a clearer picture that dogs especially, and then cats, if they're actually having a well-formulated food, are going to be doing quite well. I think that we have a serious need for more cat research, especially. So if I had cats, I might be feeding them a mostly well-formulated vegan diet, and then out of paranoia, and total disgust, you know, go and like dumpster dive some meat for them or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have cats. And if I were to plan the ideal study, I would essentially have large groups of animals on either diet and then really just get blood markers over time and see, you know, what we're getting in terms of lifespan and all of those things. And it really is the case that there are a lot of people just feeding their cats and dogs horrible things uh, that aren't vegan. And so if people are gonna come and be like, oh, feeding your dog a vegan diet is animal abuse. Um, first of all, this study is showing that it doesn't appear to be. And then also there are a lot of other people out there that you, know, that you should be directing your attention to, to make sure they aren't abusing their animals, giving them dog diabetes and all that stuff. <laughs> anyway, let me know if you enjoyed this format. It was definitely a little more involved looking at the study together. And so probably not as you know rapid fire information directly to your brain, which might not satisfy everybody's ADD, but I hope some people found it interesting to crack the study open. And that's it for today. Let me know what you think about all this. I know it's a controversial topic, but it looks like it's getting less controversial. So feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.